we warmly welcome the Honorable State Minister of Higher Education, Dr. Suresh Raghavan, to the conference. Sorry, my apologies, sir. My apologies, sir. We warmly welcome the Honorable State Minister of Higher Education, Dr. Suryan Raghavan, to the conference. Given your expertise and involvement in the DHIS2 community, we cordially invite Dr. Pamod Amarkorn, Director of HISP Sri Lanka, to share his insights and expertise by presenting a presentation on DHIS2. Good morning, everyone, Honorable State Minister and the distinguished guests. So uh, what I'm trying to do over next uh, five minutes or so is to uh, explain to you or present to you this concept of uh, digital public goods and how we are trying to achieve sustainability through that uh, in, uh, across all our sectors. This is education, health and all our sectors in the government. So let me start by briefly explaining this concept of digital public goods. So this is a very novel concept, uh, probably three or maximum five years old. So how it all started was through this uh, uh, high level discussion and which led to a publication by the UN Secretary General on a roadmap of digital cooperation. So why this came around was that the main problem most of the countries had was there were so many digital solutions that were designed and implemented but they failed to su uh, sustain over the years. So this is not a problem just in Sri Lanka. This is a problem in all the countries present here in Asia and Africa mostly and rest of the world. So to address this, the, uh, the UN Secretary General and all the UN partners is now recommending this concept to be implemented in countries called digital public goods. In fact, Sri Lanka is a signatory uh, to this uh, digital public goods. And what we mean by digital public goods, this is not just open source software. So this is open source software, open standard, open data, open AI systems, which uh, support countries in achieving SDGs or sustainable development goals, and also uh, aligned to the principles of doing no harm. So we have an entire list of such items, which, uh, which is uh, presented by the Digital Public Goods Alliance. And the platform uh, that we are discussing today, which is DHIS2, is one of them just wanted to pitch that to start my brief presentation. Right. So DHIS2 is a global platform. It's a management information system which is open source, which has been around for over three decades across the globe. So this is primarily, it was started as an implementation in the health sector. It is now present in more than 120 countries across the globe. It is not just in the health sector. Now we have education, climate, agriculture, and many other sectors. So what you are seeing here in this map are the countries across the world who are using this platform, the open source platform at the moment. In the education sector, we already have 11 countries in the world implementing and many countries who are planning to implement it. So in the last three days, you will be seeing this uh, screen very often. This is our data capture platform. But the power of DHIS2 is not just data, data capturing. It is more about analyzing data which is presented through dashboards, which is one area that we are trying to focus in, our, uh, in, the, in the latter part of the workshop. So being an open source platform, how is it going to be sustained over years? How are you going to uh, get support? Because there is no one organization company implementing it. So of course, you have the open source DHS2 community. And in addition, you also have this global network, which works very closely in this, with the countries in supporting the country implementations. Right. And one more thing that I need to highlight is all this start, I mean, while I mentioned about the uh, implementations across the globe, one innovation in Sri Lanka, which started during the pandemic, Sri Lanka implemented a COVID vaccination system based on this DHIS2 platform. So the metadata or the structure started here, and within a, a short span of a couple of months, this was spread across more than 50 countries. And also I want to uh, emphasize DHIS2 and the HISP network is not a software company, right? It does not just produce software, it is more about research, research on how to implement systems. So what you are seeing here is a recent event that we had one month back in Sri Lanka, where the Ministry of Education and Health, all the ministries across, uh, along with the global HISP network participated and discussed how best we can implement systems. So already 
This all started, I think, uh, the director and many others presented about the history of DHIS2 in the education sector in Sri Lanka. So the focus was building capacity so that ministry could own this, uh, own the capacity, they can own the system. So they have, they will uh, have their own expertise in implementing. So these are some of the photos of uh, the workshops conducted. And due to all this, we, all, we already have uh, around five to six systems, as they call it, developed by the ministry staff who are already using, and this is in action, especially in the sector uh, uh, related to uh, planning, the teacher cadre, teacher transfers, and so on. As my last slide, I want to emphasize a few key points. So the success of the HISP is that uh, it is a platform especially the DHIS2 is a platform. It's not just a software where you can build things on top of the uh, existing platform. And we prioritize features based on the uh, requests and feedbacks coming from the countries, and mainly the capacity building approach, meaning like there is no software company who's coming to implement and build systems for you. The ministry has to build capacity, and they will be the ones who are actually implementing it. And then that also leads into uh, having more ownership and the key thing, because we are a network, is the sharing. So you share across the network, and that's how uh, we all sustain as a community across the globe. And then the research. This research is not just on data. The data research is up to the ministry, but it is more about sharing the implementation practices. So that is kind of the success of DHIS2 and the HISP network. And this year, the global HISP network is uh, celebrating its 30th uh, anniversary, probably in like one month time. And uh, we would welcome all of you to join this open source network, open source community, so that you can learn together with everyone else across the globe. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir, for your enlightening presentation. We'd like to welcome Dr. Kenneth Starring to the stage to share more about a platform ecosystem approach presented in a background paper for the 2023 Global Education Monitoring Report. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you and good morning, um, uh, Honorable State Minister, um, all distinguished guests from Sri Lanka and from many other countries. Very pleased to be here representing the University of Oslo, specifically the HISP Center, and uh, just want to highlight the, the two four-letter acronyms that will be crucial today and tomorrow, and you already heard them um, uh, several times. So DHIS2 is the software platform, but the network and the community is called HISP. And um, they have some origin, but uh, these days we think of them as more like IBM. You don't have to really dig in. But the D, I can maybe emphasize, is about district. It means we really want to empower uh, the use of data um, at all levels. So district could, of course, be provincial, could be zonal, could be, but, but the, what we call, or what UNESCO also calls the middle tier of uh, data collection, data use, where we really th know that that's, that's where, um, so to speak, the action is happening in, in, uh, in, uh, in, in education as in health, and that's where good data has to be, the foundation of good data is, you know, in the, in the um, uh, service delivery points. So I have multiple uh, keywords on this uh, f uh, first slide, which overlap a bit with what Dr. Pamu just uh, presented. Um, a real uh, emphasis on sustainability achieved through a more long-term vision of how to manage data and information. So it's not just isolated attempts and short-lived projects, but it all uh, should uh, build upon each other and achieve synergies through contributing to a shared information infrastructure or digital infrastructure where you can have multiple types of uh, data, multiple uh, types of systems, but they all build on, on common, um, uh, a common core of data to make them compatible, harmonizable, 
and also uh, in use across the sectors at all levels and, uh, and even, even with outside stakeholders and partners, the public in general and, and between sectors. Let's see. So that is what we, uh, in, in short, that is what we're thinking of when we say EMIS, the classical EMIS that has been around uh, in um, pretty much all countries for, for decades, um, you know, starting on paper, maybe moving to Excel and Access and uh, some other softwares, but now increasingly having to be online, having to be, uh, you know, accessible by mobile phones, which, you know, we all have, thanks to Facebook um, and Instagram. Uh, so we, we, we want to move to something modern, which we call EMIS 2.0. And it's not, we are, we are all, I think, part of defining what EMIS 2.0 is. So, um, in light of our work, especially in the, in the health sector, as was uh, highlighted, uh, but also now uh, more than five years uh, working in several countries in the education, we were invited by UNESCO last year to contribute to their annual global education monitoring report. So we wrote a background paper, which of course is freely available um, online, um, where we really highlighted this, uh, this concept of a digital platform ecosystem and you know for integration of data and 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 uh, and um, and sustainability so we you already saw this map this uh, we really think that it's in, in incredibly important to support ministries in building up infrastructures and there's also a lot of lessons that can be learned not all of these uh, countries use DHS2 as a national system, but uh, but there are NGOs sometimes, and or sometimes it's it's uh, you know a couple of provinces, but in most of them, in fact, DHS2 is being used as a national system in the health sector, and increasingly we are now seeing it in the education sector. So again, the community aspect very important to us uh, because we feel like this is where how we learn. And as an educational institution, being the University of Oslo, we also see it as, as, as a way of sharing the knowledge uh, between uh, participants, between countries, uh, and even between sectors. So again, this is uh, one of the uh, diagrams in that report uh, with the three building blocks of community, capacity building, but centered around a flexible uh, architecture, a flexible, extendable uh, system, because we know that the priorities and the needs of a country will change over time. So hopefully then you don't have to discard everything you have, but you can, you can actually adapt it to the needs as they change. So finally, I'll emphasize uh, that there are various ways of scaling up, and it's actually hard for any country to do so in all, uh, in all um, uh, dimensions at the same time. Um, but um, uh, we really want to see that we want to integrate different types of data. We want to make it available to all those who need it uh, at a much larger frequency than just annual census and at the fine granularity, including individual students, including individual staff and, and maybe even daily data, real-time data. Thank you very much.